Hello, welcome back to the Transfer Portal CFB presented by No Context CFB. We've got Eric at home with us today. Good friend of the channel. We're stoked to have Eric on with us. How are you doing, Eric? I'm doing all right, man. It's it's good getting on with you again. And uh, yeah, we usually do what two, three, four of these a year, and it's been uh, a always while. enjoy them. I know it has. <laughs> yeah, I think we did one right before the season, if I'm not mistaken, and that may have been the last time we talked. So. Yeah. Things have changed. Things are a little different between now and then, although you and I text all the time and, and you know, hit each other up on Twitter. So I, I at least think I know how you're, how you're thinking. Sometimes you surprise me though. You'll pull a name out or, or something out there and I'll go, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. Or yeah, I didn't think, you know, so I'm, I'm excited to hear some, uh, some hires or lowers tonight. I think this is going to be fun. Yeah, we'll be doing a little higher or lower, uh, basically for those watching first off, please make sure you like and or subscribe because that would go a very long way. And basically yeah. what we're going to do here is just, I'm going to say a player and I'm going to attach a draft position to him. And then Eric's going to say whether he believes that in a few weeks that player's going higher than that draft position or mm -hmm. lower than it. We've each got five names. So 10 total, maybe we'll even do a few extra, but I mean, yeah, like Eric's knowledge is just always appreciated here. I mean, as, <laughs> as he said, the last time we spoke was like, right before the season like week zero or Zeke or week one or something and yeah. what'd you say then you said Tyree Wilson invest in Tyree he's gonna blow up well Let's how's go. that look how's that look oh I'm feeling good now I wish you know I wish you'd be healthy right now right he hasn't been able to work he'll be fine obviously but like you know wish he could have finished the season healthy I think there's still some like I don't know about skepticism, but people are just kind of warming up to him now. Like the, the people who are like the draft fans from no shame, right? I mean, from February to April or whatever, like when the season's over, they shift the draft mode, love those folks, right? They keep us all afloat for, for three months a year, but doesn't it feel to you like people are just starting to kind of say like, okay, yeah, he's, yeah. he's a top 10 guy. Yeah. And there's even all that, all that talk about, if Arizona stays at three and this yeah. choice of Tyree or Will, like I've always felt like Arizona's more of a Tyree organization. That's just how I felt. And I mean, I guess we'll find that answer soon and we could get yep. on to what, with what we're doing instead of hypothizing about that for, for a good hour. Cause we it's could a good, do that. It's a good appetizer. I like, let's get it warmed. Yeah. All right. So well, okay, I will also say I'm waiting for Arizona to trade the third pick. I still think that's going to happen. I think it already should have happened. Let's get that going already, Arizona. Let's make that move. But and I'll tell you what, it, it may not be the Colts. I'll just throw that out there. If I'm gonna, if I can drop a little, uh, I don't know, knowledge because it may not happen. But I there's another team I've heard. I've been kind of sworn to secrecy, but uh, it, there's a team outside the top ten that that that. I think has has at least talked about the idea of jumping to three. I don't know if it's going to happen. They may not even go quarterback technically. Ooh. So they, I mean, they probably would, but you know, I don't know that for a hundred percent certainty. So uh, yeah, I'll just say that it's, it may not be the the trade that everybody thinks, although, you know, Chris Ballard's going to be under some pressure, I think. Interesting. Love hearing that. We'll see. We'll see if that trade comes to fruition. I'll text TV. you who it is later. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. So my first player Sorry, that I'd guys. like to nominate is going to be Cedric Tillman with a draft position of 55 and a half. He's been getting okay. a little more love recently. I've seen some yeah. with him in the first round. Jim Nagy with uh senior bowl just said Nagy or Nagy. Sorry if I said that wrong. Yeah. Um, Nagy. Yeah. Oh, it is Nagy. Okay. So yeah. he, he was saying he thinks Tillman is, you know, just the straight up better player, the better receiver from Tennessee than Jalen Hyatt. He's expected him to see more love. I think 55 and a half is a fair slot with Detroit picking at 55 Jacksonville at 56 could see either of those teams taking a receiver higher or lower for Cedric Tillman, Eric. This is interesting. Yeah. Had you asked me a couple of weeks ago, I probably would have sided with lower just based on the fact that, you know, we didn't, we didn't see a, a, the healthiest, you know, version of him, the best version of him. And uh, you know, I think he's absolutely a, NFL receiver all day long. He's got the bill. He's a Vegas guy, right? I think he grew yeah. up out there if I'm not mistaken. Gorman. Uh, great, great physique. I think, you know, I love those guys. Like sometimes the two tall guys, they look a little awkward, but he's six threes right around 210, 215. I want to say 
big hands, long arms. You know, he's got the perfect frame. Uh, you know, there was a similar ascension a couple of years ago with Michael Pittman. I don't know if you remember this, but Pittman was sort of viewed as, you know, he, he could go anywhere. Like there was a big range of where he could have gone. And then it, it felt like coming into the draft that week, boy, even late round one was in play. I mean, it's a little different story. I think Pittman had a, maybe a bigger body of work overall, but yeah, it just, there's a lot to like about Tillman. And I think people are are going, have gone back now and have looked at the old tape and they've seen, you know, the pre ankle surgery stuff. And I'm going to say, now, wait a minute. We got to, I get, we got to define higher or lower higher means higher 56 and above lower oh, okay. 55 and below. <laughs> so lower, I think he's going earlier than that. I, I don't, yeah, I think there, there's a, there's a chance he could go before that. Um, Again, I just I would have questioned him landing in round two a little bit ago, but the more I've talked to people, especially with some a lack of of decent sized receivers, a lot of small guys this year, so I could see him getting a little bit of a bump that's unexpected. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go lower, so he's gonna go somewhere prior to 55. Yeah, I, mean, I love hearing that. I think it's tough to attach a team to him, but that's true. I'd love to see 39 to Carolina. Why not double dip? Rookie Great quarterback. Point. Yep. Rookie receiver. Let them blossom. I yep. like lower two. Wait, 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 who's the first guy you're nominating? All right. My first guy. Let me see if I can match this one up as, as beautifully as I can. How about Hendon Hooker, Mr. Oh. Tillman's quarterback? And I'm not, I'm not kidding you. That's the first name I had on my list. I didn't go out of, out of order. I thought this is serendipity here. But uh, <laughs> yeah, Hendon Hooker's uh, number is another guy that I think a couple of weeks ago, I would have given you something in the, you know, high thirties, early forties or something like that. I am now going to, going to set my number at 30.5. 30 and a half. Okay. So that means I, you know, we're, we're talking the, in between the, the Eagles and the chiefs. So obviously may not end up picking in those spots, both Definitely teams, trade trade lot, but trade yeah. That's why I felt comfortable putting it in that spot. But that's high. That's a high number. Yeah, that is. And that's amazing for him and his family if he were yeah. to land there. That'd be incredible. <laughs> oh man. I I'm gonna I don't know that he's gonna be a first. I'm just saying there's been yeah. enough talk where you kind of have to at this point. Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna go with Oh, dang. I was about to say my answer and then just thought, oh well, if this team were to trade. I am gonna go with higher though. Mm, and okay. tire. I'll see him yep. as a second round pick. And I don't know. It just fe- if he feels like someone that's going to be tough for a team to jump into the late first round, give up some extra capital and take the extra year super important, but he's already an older quarterback. How important is that extra year on his contract going to be by the end of that? You're already going to know if he's hit or if he's all, <laughs> if he's right. already out of your organization. Like, I don't think the extra year is that big of a deal. Um, I think I think he'll be a second rounder, and I do think someone's going to get like a very very solid player. Like I think the guy could be, he could be a dang good quarterback. We saw. Yeah. I don't understand people hating on him because of what he did in Hypo and Golish's offense, and like kind of trying to take that away from him. It doesn't make right. sense. That he, he went out there in a really good scheme and carved up. Good for him. We should be excited about that. We should be excited that we know that he could go out there and, and get to the NFL and work with. NFL coaches and receiver rooms and just mm-hmm. just we should be excited about that. So I'll go higher, but I I like Hendon a lot. I'm ruined for his success. I don't know where he'll go, man. I I yeah connecting him to Seattle's difficult, but what about I I like I've always liked the New Orleans spot. I've always liked that spot. They yeah. have tw- they have what twenty eight. They have forty, maybe forty. I could see it. Yep. I think you, you framed it perfectly there. I mean, like if he's a first round pick, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll admit I was wrong. I probably won't have him in my, my newest mock, which is coming out. I think next week, if I, you know, if I'm, I think I gotta, I gotta check, but I have a top hundred list before that. So, you know, cart before the horse and all that. Uh, yeah, there's obviously been a lot of buzz, but we haven't correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember in very recent drafts, 
Now, last year was a little different because we had one first, you know, one quarterback in the first 72 picks or whatever. But we haven't had that Teddy Bridgewater, Lamar Jackson pick in Reese in the last couple of drafts. So it would be a little bit of a flashback to that, you know, if the team were to get that fifth year option. You make a great point about the age. It's a concern, you know, but I think there are enough teams out there that like him that puts that end of round one scenario in play possibly. But that probably also would mean, you know, four quarterbacks going pretty high in round one and, 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 and a team getting antsy that he wouldn't be able to make it maybe to their second round pick or something like that. So I think you're on, on the right track there. I would still kind of, kind of put him somewhere in that round two range, but you never know. So we're sticking with a theme here, I guess, of, of guys that played for a school of the color orange. I'm nominating <laughs> Miles Murphy. Yeah. And there's been a wide variation. I've texted you about this for like months. Like, I don't understand yeah. why he'll be going in the 20s. I don't get that. I think he should be like a top five, top seven pick. I'm going to slot his number at 10 and a half, right in between Philly at 10, Tennessee at 11. That That's where I'll go with. I, I definitely think he should be a top 10 pick, but hey. Yeah. I I don't, but I I understand why people have you know uh, like him. I, I get that. I really think that the athletic traits are exactly what you're looking. Well, the, the the frame is exactly what you're looking for. I think the athletic traits are very good. I wouldn't say they're exceptional to the point where you just you know you overlook certain things or, or you're willing to kind of give them a pass for other things. I mean, I'd still like to see a little bit more sort of variance in his pass rush arsenal. For and sure. I think other, you know, just a little bit more diversity. I feel like he's, you know, he, he, he'd have a, a great crossover mover inside, you know, a move of some kind. Didn't see enough of that. feel like, you know, he would get kind of washed out on some lateral runs and stuff, but there's still enough high end tape there to like him. I think he's a first round pick. I don't think he's going to go quite that high, but you know, it's always with, with guys like that, you always think it wouldn't be shocking if, if a team did it. I just mm-hmm. think there are more teams that wouldn't do it. You know what I mean? So I'm playing the odds more on this one. And I think he ends up in the teens or early twenties. If I had to guess, you know, somewhere between, you know, 14 at new England and, and, you know, somewhere in that, in that 20 range, I would say. Um, so I'm going to go over, but, I, I have a feeling you you know there's at least one team up there that I think would would take a shot on him. Philly, like you mentioned, would make some sense. You know, there are a few others. Yeah, I mean, all it takes is that one team to kind of kind of silence that movement that no, yeah. we shouldn't be going there. And then we saw Cleveland goes. Farrell go fourth, right? I yeah. mean, you know, so that was like the... you never know what's gonna happen when we have 32 varying thoughts from all these front offices you never know what's going to happen i if i'm in the front office if i'm in one of them yeah i'd be a miles murphy top 10 guy i understand the lack of variation as pass rushing moves and everything but then yep. i think and i see oh he just turned 21 like He's three young. days yep. into january he <laughs> has so much room to grow and learn and progress and develop and i just think that that with the upside that you kind of reference and I think that's scary, and that's what I'm investing in. If I have yep. a top 10 pick, I'm wanting to bet on a guy that could potentially be like an all-pro talent. And sure, the floor might not be good. It might not pan out, but that's the yep. case with literally everyone you're picking. And so that the up, I, the upside is like I'm all in on, but yeah, I could be a realist. I uh, <laughs> I could be a realist, and I don't, I don't think it's going to happen unless it's the Falcons at eight and Tyree and Will are off the board. Could and be. I could see yeah, them that's... going with Murphy, but yep. I, uh, I've i got to go higher, and I love the thought of New England for him. That, um, yeah. that takes me back to when I was mocking some guy named Jared Verse there. Totally not ah. a 20 or 23 prospect. I know. Dang, I that I, one, uh, I know that's he he would have I think he'd go higher than Murphy. so far yeah he would, oh he yeah would, yeah I, I am so confident Jared would have been a top ten yeah. pick but whatever yeah he crush that top dozen at the worst absolutely yeah I mean look I like Nolan Smith a lot 
but I would rather have, you know, Jared verse, I think every day of the week, if I'm, if I'm being honest, I just, I don't, I'm not quite there with, with Nolan Smith, the way some people are after his combine work. I'm just using him as an example yeah. of a guy who's might go in that range more, you know? So yeah, I just, that's just how I view it. But um, mm-hmm. all right. So we're both higher on that. Even yeah. I, I, your, your emotional side, you know, kind of pulled I, uh, back a little and you're yeah, had to be business-like. <laughs> <laughs> business in the front party in the back <laughs> right all right all right so uh are we ready for my next guy mm-hmm. zach charbonnet i know you have okay. feelings about this man running backs are always kind of a hot topic where they go you know can you wait on them yes some teams do you end up getting lucky that sort of thing but i i, I still think there's enough appreciation for him that i'm going to set the number at 68 and a half and the you know of course that rounds up to 69 wink uh but also the two teams denver could use a back we don't know exactly what kind of back they want probably more of a receiving guy to compliment javante uh and the rams at 69 who've had their share of running back issues plus i just wanted to make the 69 joke so there you go nice. I'm, 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 a, I'm a mature man you know i'm very uh, grown up so i had to do it that way but zach charbonnet uh, just cause I also think that's, you know, sort of the ballpark of where he may go, maybe a little earlier, maybe a little higher. So I want to make it tough on you. Yeah. And you know, staying in LA would be interesting at that yeah. last pick 69, but sure. I look, I, I mean, I'll, I'll throw, I'll go a little throwback here when Charvelet was in the portal and, and, you know, went from Michigan to UCLA, I was hesitant at first. I was like, I, I was kind of taken aback. I was like, really? What do they see that I don't see? So right. He's a bit overrated at Michigan. Then he steps into UCLA, and after a few weeks, I'm like, different I'm, guy. I'm sold. He's a different beast. He's He was an animal at UCLA. He's tremendous. He's going to carve out a really like good NFL career. He'll be able to do what he wants. He's going to, okay. Well, he's not going to like run for 300 yards or anything, but he'll find <laughs> his way on the field. And he's always going to have a piece on the team. He'll always be a piece to the puzzle as long as he's yeah. healthy. And as long as, you know, he doesn't, you know, again, get Screw hurt. Up. And then he's too yeah, old. Right, or and that. And yeah. they just look by him. But I'm literally going to go higher to pick 70. I think Vegas I think Vegas could really, really hone in on Charbonnet with that 70th pick and just bolster their running back room. Charbonnet sure. would look really good in that black and silver. Right. You got Jacobs on the, you know, uh, obviously is the main guy, but you could use a compliment. You didn't see a lot of Zamir White last year. Yeah, it makes sense. And Or even Tennessee at 72 if they're mm-hmm. thinking about life after Derrick Henry. So there were a few teams in that range that I thought – you know, made some sense. He, I even New Orleans because look, yeah. I mean, Kamara, his situation's unclear again. I mean, they are different ton of kind of backs, even Cleveland. Cause you know, I mean, Nick Chubb, you got to think about life after him at some point and do they renew his deal? So yeah, I want to say that early third round range, I'm still going to go higher though. I think more likely mid third round, you know, or something like that, but you never know. It's, it's just ballpark when you're mm-hmm. guessing this deep in the draft, I just wanted to hit on somebody I knew you were passionate about yeah. there. So I mean, that's a really good landing spot though. It's yeah. a very strong running back class. It is. And, yeah. It's a nice it's, class. Yeah, and something that I've kind of referenced for like a few, a few years now is that this 2023 class, although, you know, different guys stepped up, different guys didn't enter uh, when I, from the time I said this to then, but this class was always going to kind of strike fear into a lot of running backs in the NFL and be like, we're here. This is our time. There's a a turning of the tide at the running back position. So that was kind of my thought process. I think that the 2023 class will live up to that. I think there's, there's a plethora of starters. I mean, we talked about Charbonnet. You have Bijan leading it. Jameer Gibbs is a fan favorite. Like, what about yep. the way Nick Bride? What about way off the board is Chris Smith at UL Lafayette? I think he could be a starting back. I'm a huge fan of his. Um, who else? Like, uh, Jaleel McLaughlin, another deep sleeper from Youngstown State. All he did was run for a million yards as a penguin. <laughs> he was at Notre Dame College take. before <laughs> then. 
Yeah. Um, I oh Keenan Mitchell. Yeah, Keenan Mitchell. Oh I, Mitchell, right? Yeah. I, I I wish I brought him for this. Like Keenan Mitchell, I truly believe if he stayed. Look, if I was advising him, it was a simple play. You hit the portal. Let's get you up to a bigger brand. Build you up. Yeah. You're going to be a top three running back in the 24 draft. That that was my He's personal thought, but. Yep. Kind of the Gibbs route almost, you know. Yeah, he's just he's no, not really that he was at a <laughs> low level, but right, yeah. Just you got so much more exposure. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Keenan, Keenan's gonna be a stuff. There's so many good running backs. So let me go to the offensive line. Let me go to the guy right. that, that you said could be like a cousin for me. It's Cody Mel, <laughs> North Dakota State. We've had him on here a few times. It's always good talking with him. He loves yeah. his disc golf. That's interesting. He's oh, no kidding. I'm, I used to play. I used to play back in the day. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. The first time uh, we interviewed him before the season, he was on the golf course playing just some regular <laughs> golf. But he was like, yeah, okay. me and my bison buddies, we uh, play a lot of disc golf. And we always joke that if we weren't going pro in football, we'd be playing pro <laughs> disc golf and just kicking it like that. So, hey, I follow that that Twitter account, the pro disc golf or whatever it's called. I don't know because <laughs> I love watching them shoot it. Unbelievable! the The women are incredible. the The men are great. I mean, it like you know, this is me playing. 20 year, 20 more plus years ago, back in college and stuff. And, uh, you know, we'd I would sneak a few beers on the course and I had maybe a, a putter and a two drivers and one, you know, mid range. <laughs> I didn't have a fancy setup. So I'd like to see what Cody Mount gets after his first signing bonus, you know, definitely. he's got a lot of brothers and sisters to take care of though. Okay. Um, the position I went from, you know, his, his family would love it's, it's a nice little payday. 41 and a half that is sandwiched Ooh. between Tennessee at 41 who I think could be in play for offensive lineman especially sure. after Taylor Luan was let go and you know at the combine on uh, for those of us that watched on TV we got to listen to Taylor Luan talk about Cody he was on there while he was running his 40 he was like yeah I pray him. I see a lot of me and Cody and and he went <laughs> on and like said yeah he's just a goofball He's got he, that little deceptive speed, that pretty good 10-yard split. He's going to win over the locker room. Teams are going to kind of look at him and be like, is he that serious about football, though? Yeah. And then they'll see him play in those real, oh, yeah, he's game. So I went with yeah. 41 and a half, Sam's between Tennessee and New York Jets. I like that. Yeah. It's funny because I actually talked to somebody about Cody too. And they are like, you know, I think everybody sees him and he's got the gap and, you know, kind of the, the, the hair's bright and everything like that. And he just sort of looks like a fun guy. They are like, but you know, when it's work time, he was Mr. Business, you know, like they're like, he's pretty straight laced in some ways, yeah. you know? And so I just, it was just, it's funny how like the, the public perception of him with, you know, kind of the, you know, goofy hockey player looking guy is is far different in some ways from from what his real personality is but obviously as you know very accomplished you know fc or fcs player excuse me um left tackle probably moving inside in the nfl has taken snaps at center um to work tight you end. know it, yeah right former tight end he's a great athlete um you know i think it makes him a little more attractive if he can snap. I don't know if he'll be drafted as a center, but could he move there at some point or be an emergency guy there? Absolutely. Your backup center starting at guard, you know, we've seen that happen. You shift over if somebody gets hurt, whatever. So, yeah, I really think he might he might go before that. Yeah. I, I, I think under. I'm starting to think somewhere in that. Houston 33 Rams 36 certainly the Colt I don't know if the Colts would go guard at that spot yeah um I mean I think they'd like him but you know somewhere in that in that 30 to 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 40 range I think there's there's a team or two that could make some sense for him so yeah man I I I I'm gonna go below that I I don't know that he's a first round pick I don't think he is but you never know, but I think somewhere in the first eight, nine, ten slots of round two, I could see him going. Yeah, it's hard to not want to take a versatile piece like that for your offensive line. It's just super sure. difficult to do. And you could make the argument, or right, yeah, you know, I won't say that he he's one of the top run blockers in the class. Like that's without right. doubt. Yep. You you know what you're getting in him. I think he's a pretty safe bet. Like at worst, you know, you're thinking he's a really good guard with 
center flexibility. Sure, we we're not going to play him a tackle, maybe, but we know right. we know that we know that he could be a nice swing tackle, and that's fun. I think the team that I like connecting him to, because I know how he would resonate with their fan base, and I uh-huh. don't understand them taking a running back is Buffalo. I don't know if they would take him at twenty-seven. It's a good point. But you could move yeah. down a little. You could be a feel very comfortable about taking them in the thirties. I'm yep. gonna go with lower. It might be that ginger bias, but what I mean, you went under two, so or lower yeah, right, two. okay, yeah, low, yeah. Buffalo is interesting. Yeah, I, I just gotta go lower. I think someone's gonna take the bet. I, I just he he's too complete. Like he's too good of a bet. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, and the, the, you know, there's there's so little suspicion over. You know, you say FCS, some people go, oh, okay, you know. Well, Cole Strange went first round last year. NDSU has been pumping out NFL talent. You know, I, I was looking at the Montana Pro Day numbers the other day. They looked as good as a, some SEC schools, you know. So it's like, I mean, not across the board, of course, but the high scores, you go, yeah, this guy could play, you know, he's an athlete who could play sports in the SEC, you know. So, there's less of that, that stigma against the lower level of football. We've obviously seen, you know, a lot of guys from that level succeed in the NFL. It's not the same success rate as the higher levels, but you know, for a program that's wins national titles every single year, you know, you you imagine they have some pretty good football players. So I think it's a good shot. Yeah. You mentioned Buffalo. I mean, you know, they took Cody Ford in that very early second round spot a couple of years back and, you know, I don't think they'd has. I don't know if they go first round. They'd have to move down a little, mm-hmm. but but I, you know, they're like you said, the other teams that that make some sense there. Let's go. I'm very happy we both went uh, top forty one for Cody. Yeah, about it. All right, I got I got a good one for you. Another guy that I probably would have given you a lower number on around senior bowl time. You know, even maybe you know right before the combine, I might have gone just a little bit lower. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pump the brakes just a little bit it's still a good 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 range the player is luke musgrave okay the number is 45.5 right in between green bay could use a tight end and new england who i think could use a tight end i don't know if they agree uh so you know i kind of also had detroit at 48 close by another you know they traded hawkinson last year um jets have two picks before that. I know they have s- multiple guys that they think are solid, but you know, there's certainly a, a possibility. So I don't know. What do you think? 45.5 Luke Musgrave. I do. I don't know. I, I will say um, in a campus to Canton fantasy football league, and that's pretty fun. And <laughs> Early in the year, me and my co, uh, my 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 buddy who we run the team with, need a tight end. We, we had Eurosec, but you know, production stuff. We need a tight end. I'm like, yo, I think we should go out and get Luke Musgrave. Issue, he was hurt, and he stayed hurt. And in college <laughs> football, you don't get updates on the injury, so he was just yeah. hurt week after week after week. Sell for Joel Wilson, never picked up Musgrave, and he turns into uh. this brutal but man you, you've, I been, you've been stung <laughs> yes, but i am so glad that other people saw the talent that he possesses even without having to to play in his draft year like that doesn't happen very often especially, especially when end. you play at oregon state and when you're a tight end right. that is yep. so rare so you know that people are completely like aware and cognizant of what this kid possesses the issue is as i've told you many times before I just don't get it with so many tight ends going in the first round, especially when the class is just so dang good. Like, yep. I, I just feel like if you're telling me I have to take Musgrave in the top 45, I'm probably just saying, okay, but I could get, I could get like Julius Brents or Cam Smith in this range. Right. And then I could yep. go in round three and hopefully I'm able to hit on Sam LaPorta. Like I just, I just like that so much more. <laughs> I Absolutely. Like, I like Musgrave as a player, and it's very tough for me to, to know what the NFL is going to do with this because they're so dang just – you don't know what's going to happen on the tight end market. And I think I'm just going to have to go with my gut 
and where my head is at and say over 45 and a half. I got to go yep. with a higher number here and bet on bet on the smarts, I guess. And I, I, I mean, what about the Giants at 57 is a potential spot? Sure. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. It's tough putting a number on him because of the it small is. sample size. Because like of he's the been mocked, like what to Green Bay at fifteen before, right? That, it isn't happening. I mean, it just is. Yeah, it's I not mean, happening. Like he could turn out to be a, the best tight end in this class, right? I mean, I think if you 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 could see a path to that happening, but he could also be the fourth one drafted. You know, mm-hmm. so it's you know what we know now and what we know in the future are two different things, obviously. So, I I. There's a there's a part of my brain that thinks, man, somebody in that early second round is just gonna just jump on him, you know, and just say, screw it. He's got NFL bloodlines, got NFL athleticism. Although he wasn't quite the 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 runner everybody thought he was, he ran well. He, you know, I mean, he jumped well. He had enough enough athletic traits on display, I think, to make him a you know, what did he run? A four, six flat. That's fast for a tight end. You know, most tight ends are are right around that spot. I wish he would have been in the four fives. Um, you know, I, but 36 inch vertical jump, 10, 10 and a half foot broad or whatever it was. He's a good athlete. He's long, but do you trust the player enough? I don't know. I mean, I thought he looked fine at the senior bowl. Didn't dominate. Did look like a look like he belonged for sure. That doesn't scream early to mid second round to yeah. me. I'll probably say over, but I, I do think there 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 will be a couple teams that have some conversations about him on the clock. Yeah, and I mean, again, it's not even really – it doesn't all, like, come down to him. It's more about the class, too, and, like, someone could just have a higher grade on, like, Luke Schoonmaker or Zach Koontz, and Correct. they're going to take him because they're afraid, oh, we can't make a move down. This team, like, four picks behind us is super high on – I don't know, Tucker Craft. Like we've got to yep. secure Craft right now. Like that, that's just there's some Will Mallory. I mean, we can name a million tight ends in this class, man. I they're yep. they're so good. Marshawn Ford, super underrated too. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, good player. I I just I just think he'll fall victim to there being too many guys. The depth. And yep. yeah. And what can you do? I think he'll be a good pro. I think he'll have his like he'll find a good role to carve out everything, but Top 45 coming off a, a season where you didn't even like play at all is just it's hard to envision just coming out coming out of nowhere like this because obviously we know him, but you know, yep, that kind of term. But yeah, I'll I'll just have to go higher. And I was gonna go with I was gonna go with Ringo for my okay. next one, but I want to change it. I want to stick it tight on now. I oh, think I just I, like I, I want I want to stay You're there. You're on the groove, yeah. Yeah, let's go with the uh, thirty-eight and a half for Darnell Washington. That's, that's right. A good number. Vegas at thirty-eight, Carolina at thirty-nine. Yep, that's a good number. Um, you know, I I think I got a little over my skis when I projected him as a late first. I thought, boy, guys, that size for all the reasons you just laid out. You know, like if you look at the kind of the recent history of of tight ends in the draft, the most successful ones have tended to come in those kind of those middle rounds. You know, it's a couple early yeah. rounds. There's obviously, you know, we but we've been disappointed when guys get overdrafted, right? Like Kyle Pitts is going to have a unfair expectation placed on him because of his draft status, highest drafted tight end ever. Not Eric even e- that. The guys who went after Pitts. It just yeah. it's not fair for that that kid. Right. And that too. I mean, it was one of the most loaded drafts, and he, he has a chance to be very good, or he could be the the you know, the the Brian Bosworth of the of the group. You know what I mean? I mean not that's not who I was trying to think of. Who's that? Tony Mandarich is what I was trying to think of. Yeah. You know, Deion Sanders, Barry Sanders, whatever, is one of the greatest drafts ever. He's the guy who was kind of the bus. But <laughs> the picks. I just yeah. want to say the picks for for a viewer who might not know off the top of their head. Yeah. Pitts was at four, and then you had from five to thirteen, Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddle, Penne Sewell, JC Horn, Patrick Sertain the second. Devontae Smith, Justin Fields, Micah Parsons, or Sean Slater. It's just tough being a tight end going four and going in front of all those guys consecutively. 
It's a great point. That's a great point. And Mac Jones. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just had to throw that in there. You're right. Right. I mean, that's the, that's the problem with taking a tight end that high. I, I do think though, you're in the very, very good ballpark there. I think it's, I'm going to go under. Cause I do think there might be a team in that, in that Colts range 35, somewhere around there where they say, all right, now we'll we'll get them. You know, this is the spot where you we like our first round pick. It, it was a high priority position. You know, left tackle, prep passer. Uh, you know, pass rusher. I mean, quarterback, whatever it may be, receiver. Now we could take kind of the the luxury pick, if you will, and get this freaky tight end who, who I by the way, I don't think he's quite as good a blocker as everyone makes him out to be. I've seen enough enough flaws in his tape, and I'm not even a you know, blocking O-line guru or anything like that. But, you know, he he overextends. He he gets a little off balance. He doesn't finish blocks. But with that length and that strength, he'll be fine if he has good coaching and underuse the receiver. I, I, I think there's a a fascinating player there, no doubt about it. But so I'll go under. I, I think somewhere in that, you know, 32 to 30 – seven or eight range he could he could end up going i don't think he's a first but maybe you know so what do you think we haven't disagreed yet and originally no. originally my thought was to go lower here um in our pick is in series for kansas city i drafted darnell i want to say i don't know if i took him at 31 or if i moved i, th- I, I did in the last one yeah i took i put him to kc yeah okay so so then like we have the same thought here of uh, it's like it's hard. I don't like using the term luxury pick. Right. This is more of just you know, kind of a winning pick, I would say. If if Kansas City were to take Darnell, and you're yeah. not taking him to go in there and eventually replace Travis Kelsey, that's not different player, different player, completely right. different. That's not what it is. It's all right. We need to get super excited about the endless possibilities that we have to work with this monstrous athletic freak in our red zone offense and inside the five and go and win another Super Bowl because that's why I think Darnell Washington would be in Kansas City. He's just going to be a dang good playoff player that's going to go out there and thrive and yeah he might not be the most complete run blocker or anything but he's going to help a lot and and yeah Andy Reid is going to just have endless possibilities him and Mahomes thinking what to do. However, will he go 31? I don't think he would. I yeah. think Kansas City would be more inclined to trade down and take him. I I, I wanted to agree again and go with lower. I like it. I'm glad you didn't. I can. I don't <laughs> think I can. I'll have to go higher and I have no clue where he'll go. <laughs> he'll have a clue. <laughs> he'll have a clue. But he'll go somewhere after, uh, what I say, 38 and a half. He'll go somewhere I think after so. there. And, All right. And yeah. New, just, New England would take him. I think the Patriots would take him, you know. Right. So there's a few teams in the 40s that would certainly uh, snap him up. I was trying to think of the tight end. Uh, Jody Fortson, that's the guy. Yeah, like – I sort of a receiver slash tight end, but they have Blake Bell. You know, I'm trying to think of like that, that big tight end Demetrius Harris. Remember they had that guy. They've always had the kind of the King size tight end. Who's got some receiving chops, but also can help out as a blocker. So there is a role in that offense for Darnell Washington. I'm just saying, just saying. Right. I could picture him Kansas city. All right. So, uh, all right. You switched off Ringo. Now I am going to stay with, I was actually tempted to switch just to throw you <laughs> off here, but, uh, although you don't know what I'm picking anyway. So Mozzie yeah. Smith is the okay. name I'm giving you. The question is where to place him. Cause now I'm going to have to do this sort of on the fly and make sure I'm not given too high a number, too low a number. I'm going to put the number at, we're kind of in the same ballpark as, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to say 36 and a half between, oh no, that's Denver at 37. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me give this a little more thought. Okay. I, th- yeah, Carolina wouldn't take him to New Orleans. No, 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 no. 
Well, screw it. I'm just going to put them at 36 to the Rams. Like, I mean, that's that's the number I'm going to give you. So higher or lower than 36? Well, it's a pretty low number. I mean, I gave you a, I didn't give you a big one there. No, no, no. Let me think for a second about where we're going. To He's tricky. Next. He's a tricky yes, one. My my first like thought, it's 36 and a half. My first thought, my first thought's over. Yeah, I agree. I, I think my first thought over higher. I even told you before. I can't go seventieth, and it wouldn't over. shock me. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I I just feel like Mozzie is someone that people. I, I could see people on Twitter getting mad and being like, why isn't Mozzie Smith gone yet? What is happening? Is there something that we don't know that's happening, et cetera? And then he kind of just falls down and falls through the cracks. That's going to that's gonna happen with everyone. Or not everyone, sorry. That's going to happen yeah. every year. Yeah. Somebody. And he might fall victim to it. Maybe a team like Seattle at 52 is the landing spot. Maybe the LA Chargers at 54. I think Mozzie is more primed for that 50 to 65 range. I agree. Yeah, I, I would put it at over two. There's just been some buzz lately that he could that he could go off the board early in round two, which surprised me a little bit. I he's another player that I like but don't love. I think I mean, don't get me wrong. I I, I appreciate him for the athletic traits in that size of a body. I mean, that's that's that doesn't grow on trees and it's a tough year for defensive tackles, which is why I pushed the number up about 10 or 15 yeah. from what I was going to give you. I was, I was going to go around 50 and I thought, you know what? I think with, cause 50 would be the midpoint of early second round buzz you've been hearing lately. And also what our instincts tell us, he should probably go somewhere in that 50 to 65 range or whatever, you know, so you average the two and I, you know, they, I would yeah. just went a little above that, but yeah, I, I, I think you're right. I think over is more likely it is, a, it is a lean year for some of those D tackle types, but you know, Christian Barmore went like 46th or whatever it was. I don't remember exactly where he went. It was a thin, thin, thin year that year as well. I, you know, it, it takes a certain type to get people really excited or it takes a big weakness or a defensive scheme shift you saw Philly obviously last year go Jordan Davis. That was an unusual pick for them, but mm -hmm. they had a real specific vision of what they wanted from him. Uh, you know, a run defense that struggled the year before. This is our guy. And, you know, he did what they asked him to do. So you know, there's always exceptions, but I'm with you. I, I tend to think the over's more in play. Yeah. The higher. The higher. Yeah. Yeah. We keep messing up. We got to be careful. Oh, uh, my boss is calling me up. I'm not betting on these things, just so you know, for the record, you know. <laughs> they're hypothetical numbers that we're Yeah, we made up. them up. They're not Vegas numbers, right? Exactly. We're, we're just being sharp minds and just yeah. predicting the heck out of this. And it's going to look real good in a few weeks. Exactly. Like, yeah, like the positional value is also why I lean towards higher there. I'm obviously someone that's not too like big on taking a defensive tackle, like with that kind of draft capital. And when I'm having to look at, I'm taking, let's say Mozzie from 30 to 36, I'm taking him over guys. Like, I mean, what was like Zay flowers is there or Brian branch, maybe slips there. There's Antonio Johnson. Is there a possibility where Dewan Jones ends up that late? And I mean, Yep. Josh Downs. Well, if I want to take a receiver there, and I mean, as I've said, Cam Smith, Julius Brent, those guys. I just, I just would, I just don't want the defensive tackle there. It just, yep. Unless they rush the passer, or unless they are freakishly gifted. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And, and hey, defensive tackle. You're gonna find some guys later in the draft. Chattanooga's Devontae Maxwell interview with him is already going to be on the channel by Very the time cool. this is out. 37 and a half sacks in his career. Some say that's a lot for a defensive tackle in his <laughs> collegiate football career. They do say that. Yeah. yeah. So let's put some respect on Devontae's name. Look out for him day three and, and get familiar with that talent. I don't know if I want to go with Will Anderson for this one because okay. but I feel like we should have someone at the top is the issue, but I don't know. I you know what? Up to you, man. You call I it. I don't know. Uh, Deontay Banks, twenty and a half, top twenty pick for Deontay. Wow, Banks. wow! You just <laughs> shot that right out there. I wasn't expecting it. Yeah, 
Uh, let's so let's see. 20, 20th pick would be Seattle. 21st would be Chargers. Baltimore sitting there at 22. Minnesota at 23. A couple teams after him would love him. Corner for the Giants if they don't go receiver to Jacksonville. I could see taking a corner. So all the teams right behind that would love it if they fell. Then again, Washington at 16, Pittsburgh at 17, even Detroit at 18. If they, you know, don't feel like Cam Sutton is enough, you want to get one more guy in there. You're thinking about moving on from Okuda after this year. Make, you know, I, all right, sounds good. Corners are hard to find. You could always, you know, you, you, you can never have too many of them, I don't think. So, yeah, Tampa brought Dean back. They did lose Murphy Bunning. Uh, it's an interesting spot. There's a That was a good number. That's a pretty darn good number. Uh, Deontay's agent might be listening to this too, so I better <laughs> be very, very careful how I, uh, how I answer this. Um, I still think higher. Okay. But I like him a lot. I like both corners there. I like Bennett too. I think Bennett's gotten a little short shrift in this, in this group a little, um, but yeah, I would, of the two, I'm taking banks higher, obviously. And I would say that one of those teams, I'm just kind of looking at the list, Baltimore, Minnesota, Jacksonville, Giants, even Buffalo, if he somehow slipped, you know, they could use another DB, I guess, uh, yeah, somewhere in that in that in that early twenties is where I think he's going to go, and not twenty. So I'm going to go higher. All right, I will make Deontay's agent very happy. I'll be going lower. I think he will be a top twenty pick, and I he think could. I I really like the idea of Washington at sixteen or Pittsburgh. I, I mocked him there. Yeah, like, I put I him think, there a couple weeks ago. I think both those spots are terrific, and I just think that hey. But he went out there and again, I'll say it a million times. This corner class is just filthy. There's so good. many good players. I, I I think after the combine, I said my number for like guys I would take in the first round. I think it was eight. Like I legit like eight of them. And, and that includes like Eli Ricks and Julius Brents and wow. Darius Rush, guys who aren't going to go in the first place. They right. should. Banks is so good, dude. Um Again, he wowed at the combine. He had like a 9.99 uh, RAS score from Math Bomb. He was like, what Trevor Sigma said that his 42 inch vertical was um, 97th percentile. I think he shot himself <laughs> up, up into the first round with ease. That's a guarantee. I think top yep. 20 is it's like super possible. And I don't see someone's going to bet on him and, and someone is going to just gush over what they saw in the combine and while we're sitting here doing this right now there's a few guys in the front office with the team picking from like i don't know that 10 20 range they're just sitting there right now and they're just thinking and they're and they're just thinking like we need deontay banks we need deontay yep. banks what i can't yep. get it out of my mind what we saw at the combine we've gone back we've done our homework he was staying good at maryland we see all these the athletic traits and the ball hawking skills and just oh yeah why not Locks got some why athletes not? there man yeah yes. they've they've recruited well the last couple of years and so why not refilled why, that talent yeah I'll, I'll even predict then that deontay banks stays in the dmv and goes to washington at 16 like you i like it said. i like it i like it all right my last guy you mentioned him briefly a minute ago and you hinted at the possibility of him slipping out of round one. So I, this this is – you couldn't have read my mind any better. Ryan Branch is the name. Ooh. The the number – I'm going to give you a fairly big number here. I think you might be surprised at this one. I guess. Guess guess the number. Let's hear your guess. 34 and a half. A little higher. Not too oh. much, though. That's pretty good, though. I was going to go 30, 30... – Nine and a half. 39 and a half. Well, okay. Carolina, New Orleans. I didn't, I was just sort of thinking, all right, you know, all right. I mean, that's he's a darn good player, but yeah, the testing has to worry some people a little. Yeah, the testing is definitely going to worry a lot of people, and then it becomes that thought of are you a like analytical person or are you an eye test guy? 
Yeah. And how I view things, I I love the analytical mind and I love the eye test mind. Why can't we just have both? Why can't we do both? Sure. So simple. That's why I like thing here though is the safety class just doesn't excite me as much as a lot of these other positions do. Not at all. I don't like and, the group at all. Yeah. So that <laughs> like that's an issue. I've yep. I've always kind of gravitated towards JL Skinner as maybe being that first safety off the board. He's a just a daunting presence, super physical. Issue is he didn't get to go out there at the combine and showcase his skills. He's been dealing with his injury. That's not fun. But so so when we get 39 and a half here, I completely understand if Branch were to be a first round pick. I completely do. But yeah. I, I in my four mocks, I haven't I've mocked him in the first round once, and it was 13th to the Jets. And I just felt like that was a perfect fit i felt like that's that's at the time where i think that was my third mock where branch was really just popping off and everyone's heads and everything and everyone was gushing over him at the time and so i was like yeah sure i'll I'll go with this i i liked it i don't think he'll go first round after the testing though uh i don't think the combine was a good showing at all which doesn't in any way say much about the player that he is because if you know about branch you know that's those instincts and the versatility that really excite you and he was yep. never going to dominate the combine like some people might have thought that was never Correct. the case so 39 and a half i go higher and i go to one of those jets picks at 42 or 43 and i think the jets are only gonna have one of those i, I one was probably getting right you would think gets shipped out for rogers and if that doesn't happen, they're picking there with 42 and 43. Guess what? They ain't picking back to back. One of those picks will be shipped anyway, whether they move up or they move right. down with one of them. So whichever one they have, 42 or 43. I'll That's take. a Joe Douglas pick too. That's a Joe yeah. Douglas pick. I could see him drafting Brian Branch. That, yeah. that would be in his wheelhouse, the kind of football player he wants, the versatility. You know, they've had Jordan Whitehead and, you know, some okay safety play, but nothing special. And you know, you know, that that Robert Salah is going to want more versatility back there. Look what he has. Look what he had with a guy like um, Jimmy Ward, you know, and and look what, you know, a guy who could play up in the box. He could play deep safety. He could play the nickel. That's kind of what Branch is, you know, and so. I, I'm gonna go under, and I think there's a there's a chance somebody like a Jacksonville, if they're if they're saying like that's yeah. the spot we need to fill, boom. Okay, we love Jenkins as our enforcer. You know, we've now we've got branch in the nickel. Okay, whatever. I mean, I could see a team just saying we're close. Mm-hmm. We we love him as our nickel defender or whatever, you know, or our safety but more likely early round two. But yeah, I mean I it, he's a he's a tricky one to pin down though. You're right. Yeah. I like your Jets idea there. That's good. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's two of my like biggest player to team fits: Branch to the Jets and Darnell Washington to the Chiefs. Like I'm in love with both of those potential landing spots. I love it. So yeah, I mean, I just I've just gotta go higher there for Branch and see him as a Jet. Like you, yeah. I mean, for, again, pick is in series. I um, had sauce to the Jets last year. Obviously, I wasn't going to pass up on that. But yep. this year, my thoughts, if I'm in the Jets front office, sure, Branch would be a nice prize, a nice little uh, pick at 42 or 43. Dude, 13th pick, I'd be taking the corner, and I want Sauce Gardner and some shutdown corner for years to come. That's what I would want. The yep. issue is the corner I would like ain't going 13. Cam Swiss just not going that high. I'm, I'm very well aware of that. <laughs> hey, that's your guy, man. Yeah, I think I think with Smith, um, there's been some character stuff that people have dug on a little bit just to kind of figure out, you know, who he is. And, and um, I don't have all the details on that, but I just know that there have been some teams who've kind of looked into him a little bit on that in that regard. Talent's there. It's a deep class. As you pointed out, um, and you know, corners of a, a total crapshoot. If you look, mm-hmm. you know, Tariq Woolen last year, obviously slipping the way he did, and then performing the way he did. You and I are shaking our heads, but you know, yeah, it was, this was a top forty pick. 
<laughs> I was asking you the night before the draft yeah. for my for, for my predict the pick if I should like be serious about Woolen going in the first round. <laughs> I mean, if you saw just the measurables and the workout numbers, you'd say, sure, yeah, absolutely. Now he was a little new to corner. You know, there was some tackling stuff on tape that people didn't like. It was like hot one rep, cold the next. But you, you and I saw it. We yeah, that's all that blow matters. Up, his blow up did not surprise us in the slightest. No, no. and yeah. and the just the fact that he went a good seventy or eighty, if I'm being conservative, picks later than I thought he would. Like if you'd have told me before the draft he was going to go 80th pick, I would have been like, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay, but but y'all okay. are still wrong. Y'all you're wrong, but right you're not this. you're not as wrong as as you yeah. Uh, 150 whatever it's like god, you know. So it's it's a crazy position, you know. JC Jackson undrafted becomes a star with the Patriots and then flames out quickly with you know, it's like it's such a crazy spot like draft wise, you know, really good corners can slip sometimes because of the way yeah. they were used, the way they weren't used. You know, a million different Steve reasons. News is a position like Darius Rush, who got to South Carolina as a yeah. wide receiver. Now he's playing quarter. It the happens a lot. Guy that I'm a significant fan of. Someone's getting a, a steal and what a, on day two with Darius Rush, third round or second round. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Getting a yep. Steal. yep, I think he and Cam will both go in that. Mm-hmm. You know, forty to ninety range, somewhere in there. I don't know. I'm just ballparking, yeah. but yeah, it's just like if if I'm the Jets. And I see that we've got sauce and he's going to be locked down for years to come. How do I not, how how do we not say this corner class is just so dang good. How do we not invest some high capital into this? And look in 2025, we have sauce entering his fourth season. How good is he going to be? And then we have rookie corner that we took in this class entering his third season opposing quarterbacks are in the tour like they're they're in the pad so like that's imp- that's gonna be impossible to play against. and you're thinking about it the right way which is the Bro, contracts the needs away too yes and the contracts yeah. the, the i mean honestly like when i talk to people you know i'm asking traits and this and that and those matter those absolutely matter but teams are, are well we took this guy at this position last year he's going to be up for free agency in you know 4 years 5 if we pick up the you know that's how they think they are thinking 2 and 3 and 4 years down the road you know obviously you have to think about tomorrow too but yeah. that's an important element of it in the team building you know strategy you need really good players that have youth that are on good deals it's just what you need to win yep and uh yeah, I mean, we... And if you aren't going to pay him, trade him. You know, I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. what else? That's well, it. We did a lot more than just uh, the 10 higher, lower guys. So yeah, we good little some... all around the yeah. all the world chat there. I like yeah. it. Hope we brought some good knowledge to y'all again. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Follow Eric on Twitter. His ad's about on the screen the entire video. I don't know how long this went. So I know we said... Like an hour, be, right? We yeah. said it might only be 10 to 20 minutes. I my, love it. My concept of time is horrific. But well, when well. we start talking draft, feels yeah, like ten minutes. So yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It, it it definitely did feel like an hour. But again, Eric, thank you for bringing your insight, your knowledge, and just higher lower is very fun. I'll make sure yeah. to get some graphics out for this, and we'll track yeah. them for when the draft comes. And just don't everything. ask me to do this in August, okay? Because <laughs> I won't move. Right. <laughs> well, first of all, we'll forget. We're like, oh, wait a minute. Did we do that? Really? Yeah, no. This is awesome, man. I had a I had a blast. Look, other people might forget that. I would remember <laughs> it. I would bookmark you would. it and I would be looking at it. I, I swear Damn, I would be I looking missed. at that after like every week in the college football season. I'd be like, why did I this one's looking dog? good? <laughs> this one's looking good. Why did I not nominate this other guy that I knew was gonna pop off? But like yeah. I just yeah, that'd be me. So Oh, you know. I love it. You got to pull that trigger, man. You, you're not afraid to. I, I, I've no, seen it. Definitely not f- afraid to pull the trigger. My takes are definitely no, definitely bolder and yes, just just real. They're real. Yeah, not bold, real. That's why. That's why I watch, and that's why everybody else does too, man. True. Again, so if you're watching, listen to Eric. He says you Ew. should watch. And you like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. But yeah, leave a five star rating while you're at it. Yes, that too. Thank you again for watching. And uh, yeah, thank you, Eric. All right. See you later, man.